Today, I'm gonna to be making chunky caramel nut brownies. There's a nice picture of what we're striving for right here. Uh, this is from the Woodland Creek Cookbook. This is put out by Publishers Clearinghouse. Uh, this is salted caramel recipes specifically. Georgian sent us this cookbook. Uh, so thank you very much to Georgian. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do is go over all the ingredients you need. You need three fourths or one and a half sticks of butter. Uh, four ounces. It says unsweetened chocolate. I, they did have unsweetened chocolate bars at Walmart. Kevin and I don't want unsweetened, so we bought the semi-sweet chocolate bar. Two cups of sugar, four eggs, one cup all-purpose flour, one package or 14 ounces of caramels unwrapped. Uh, so I will unwrap these. Then you need a uh, one-fourth cup whipping cream, one teaspoon of salt, two cups of pecan halves or coarsely chopped. We kind of have a mixture of both here. And then one package, about 12 ounces of chocolate chunks or chips. We're gonna be dividing some of this out, by the way. So the first thing you wanna do is preheat your oven, which you heard mine. It has reached the temperature to 350 degrees. And then you want to spray a nine by 13 inch baking pan with non-stick cooking spray. I just use the Great Value Walmart brand vegetable cooking spray. So now we want to combine our butter. We're gonna take a bowl and we're gonna open up our butter and our chocolate and we're going to uh, put these in the microwave. the remaining chocolate bar. It takes the whole four ounce chocolate bar and we're going to microwave it for uh, one minute and then we're going to stir it and then we'll put it in for like 30 second increments until all this is um, melted and smooth. This is after only one minute but we have a really nice microwave. Uh, so now you want to stir in your sugar and then we're going to also Sorry for the noise. Uh, then we're gonna also add our eggs and we're gonna add those one at a time. Now you want to stir in your flour. I'm gonna take half of this, which I don't know how you're supposed to know half of it. We're just gonna guesstimate. And I'm gonna spread it in the bottom of this pan like this. And we're gonna bake this for 20 minutes. So the recipe actually calls for a 14 ounce bag of caramels. This is only a 13 ounce bag and they're calling it a value pack by Kraft. Um, this was the only one that I saw. I think, honestly, I think sometimes these recipe books are written and then the bags get smaller. That's, that's happened with many things. Uh, that they keep getting smaller and smaller and we tend to not notice them until you go back to a recipe where they originally did come in 14 ounce bags. But what we have to do, I'll show you, these all come individually wrapped. So Kevin and I are going to unwrap these. We're gonna put them in this bowl. We're also gonna add our um, heavy cream to the bowl. I can go ahead and do that. And we're going to microwave it. Um, and once again, we're gonna microwave it on high and then uh, for a minute and then uh, we'll stir it. But you don't want to, to microwave it until uh, your, um, your stuff in the oven uh, is almost finished. So that, it takes 20 minutes for that first step in the oven. Wait till it gets to be like at the 15 minute mark and then microwave these. But it'll take us a minute to uh, unwrap all these caramels and put them in the bowl anyway. We took our mix, our base out of the oven. It just came out. Uh, now we're gonna stir, this is the caramels and um, we're gonna stir in the salt. And then the bowl I showed you of the pecans, I took out one cup and you're gonna stir in one cup of the pecans. Now 
pour this mixture over uh, what just came out of the oven, the base. I'm calling it the base. <laughs> Switching from a spoon to a spatula. I wanted to make sure I scrape my bowl out really well. Now um, I'm gonna gently spread this out because I don't want to pull up any of that brownie off the bottom. Now we're going to use half of our chocolate chips. So I'm just gonna wing it. Spread those over the top. I don't think if I got too few or too many, it's not like I'm gonna hurt it. <laughs> that looks like about half to me though. Okay, now you take the rest of your batter over here and you pour this over the top. Switched again from the spoon to the the scraper just because it's best to get it all out of the bowl. And now spread this as best you can. Take your remaining uh, pecans and spread these out and your chocolate chips and spread those out. Now we're gonna take this whole pan and put it back in the oven and let it bake for 25 minutes. I left these in the oven for the full time, uh, the whole 25 minutes. And so now you are supposed to let them cool completely. So it, um, that will probably take another half hour. Okay, this recipe says it makes two to three dozen brownies. So what I did, um, I'm gonna cut them, but what I did was I took this and I went around the edges. Normally, this is the kind of recipe where I would put parchment paper in the pan. If you use parchment paper, you can lift it right up. You can cut these so easy um, on your counter or cutting board right on top of that parchment paper and every single brownie will come out perfectly. It, the directions told me to spray the pan, so I sprayed the pan. got 24 brownies. I think that's pretty good, 24 brownies. So my brownies, they look close to theirs, but honestly, I think to get these to look the way that they did in the picture, I wouldn't doubt it if they didn't put these in the freezer or something because the edges are so straight. And even if these cooled off for two days, to get those straight edges, it's gonna need to be cold, I think. To be able to cut them, you mean? To cut them, yeah, yeah right. because they cut them. You can tell that to cut them, it looks like a piece of fudge on the side. It would have to be very cold to be able to do that. You're not gonna do that with a room temperature brownie. So, I'm very pleased with the way these turned they look out. Familiar. To get the, uh, the thumbnail picture, uh, though, I mainly chose pieces from the outside and I gave Kevin a piece from the outside the because um, the reason I did that is because I think Kevin will prefer that to the center. The center pieces are oh. very ooey gooey. I like center too. Um, I like the gooey brownies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely delicious. Mm -hmm. I think you could take a Ghirardelli brownie mix, and they have a salted caramel brownie mix, and I think you could make them, let them bake, um, and then put the same pecans and uh, do the same thing you did, basically, but instead of making it from scratch, make it with a Ghirardelli box cake. 
I think it'd be awesome, but this is pretty fast. Very good, very sweet. Mm -hmm. um, you get the caramel, you get the um, the chocolate, the pecans really, really come through. Yeah. Uh, that edge is a little like crispy. I was going to try one in just a second, but you have to be able that, to talk when I do it. Yeah, that's um, that's what uh, that I was going to do too. Um, I think this is really good. The caramel, the caramels that we got is the squares. They also have caramel bits that you can, they're like little balls of caramel mm -hmm. in a bag in the baking section. You may be able to get those and melt them as well. We were afraid to try them because we knew the caramel squares and how they worked. Mm -hmm. The bits may melt and work exactly the same way. So if you've used those before, you could use those as, as well. The thing, um, when I was spreading that final layer of chocolate on top, it did not completely cover that caramel. When you, if you make these, you want to cover that caramel because what happens is it's good, but it's almost like a piece of hard candy. It's just harder to eat. It's not as ooey gooey. And so when you cover, when you cover with your final layer, like I said, try to cover all that caramel. Um, mm. So I tried really to half and half, but mm. um, the, that big batch, um, but I didn't feel like I had enough left to cover the top completely. Maybe I could have worked at it a little bit harder. What do you think of that edge? It's good. It is a little, um, tough, not tough yes. in a bad no, way. No, you're, just, you're right. It's not like your typical brownie has just like a crunchiness on the edge. Mm -hmm. This one does have more of a sugared, like a crystallized edge. Mm -hmm. Still not bad. It does get stuck in your teeth, but, um, I like the edge. But I would like the gooey center just as well. So mm -hmm. either one is good for me. I also got a little bit more of a salty flavor from the outside part than I did the center part. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. Maybe because there was more caramel on the outside or whatever. I don't know. But it, they work perfect. I would make these and, and have these for parties or whatever. Absolutely. But I will, my note, when I write a note in here, I will say use parchment paper. If you use, it was easier, would it be easier to get out? Well, the thing is, is it wasn't hard to get out of that pan because we have a new Rachel Ray pan. Um, it wasn't hard to, for it to come out, but if you are able to pick up a piece of parchment paper, every piece is going to be pretty. Right. And the first few pieces of this, when I pulled them out, they, they wanted to fall apart and stuff just because of the way you have to right. maneuver to get and, in that and pan. And you're not ruining your pan by cutting things in your, exactly. your pan up either. Exactly, because that was a brand new pan and I thought, here, this is the new pan and I am having to cut this in the pan where parchment paper, the, your pan's fine. So- You could use two parts of piece of parchment, one this way and one this way and then you could just, it would cover all the sides really well. I just too. think parchment paper is your friend. When you're baking, it, it will be your best friend ever and yeah. you're gonna love it. And they it. didn't mention it, so we didn't use it. But, but, but I, 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 yeah, for other recipes in this book, if I'm making brownies or something like that, I'm gonna use parchment paper. Just know that from here on. Uh, but this is a delicious, Wonderful rich, yeah. terrific recipe. Yeah, when I get done, I'm gonna finish that. Absolutely. And I might get another one. Yeah. So I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.